coming up. I'm out on the Susquehanna River with Joe Raymond. Good morning, folks. And Coop. Say good morning, Coop. What? Say good morning. Good morning. Alright. I don't think Coop's awake yet. Hopefully these fish are. We'll wake them up with the fish. Yeah. We're, we're actually going to wake them up uh, maybe with a couple rattle traps, some jerk baits. We'll see if we can get by with. Uh, we do have a lot of grass coming down. We yeah, can... hopefully we can uh, find a spot in the river where we can get away from the grass. Try and keep it off of our hooks, but it is what it is. Yeah. I know when we have, uh, when we have grass coming down, we'll fish different things that we've been... Uh, Things other than treble hooks, but I've, I've got a couple baits that I want to throw that have treble hooks. We'll give those a shot first. So let's get up there. I'm excited. All right, Coop, you want to use this? Yeah. We got a, a jerk bait here, and this is a Lucky Craft Pointer 100. And what do you think I'm putting on there? Stuff to make it smell bad. Yeah, stuff to make it smell bad. But I think even more importantly with the jerk bait, I like to to put this sort of thing on there to lubricate it. Because sometimes these fish, they'll go like this. They'll take it and they go ah ah, and they clamp it down on it so hard that it won't slide in their mouth. I've actually caught fish that grab the outside and I never get the hooks on them. So that if you lubricate it with this stuff. It does make it stink. Mm. Tastes good. <laughs> if you're a fish. It's gotta lubricate it so that it'll slide and then they'll get they'll get hooked. So you're gonna throw this jerk bait. Go for it, buddy. I'll do the same thing with the uh, the rattle trap here. This is a this is a rattle trap I've done well with in the past. A, a copper's live target lipless rattle bait and I, I don't you know I do well with some not as well with others this one I got a lot of confidence in so we're gonna throw up rattle traps are really good for whenever they're they're swatting at uh, spinner baits and stuff like that and not getting oh. hooked they almost get hooked <laughs> okay watch me on the back cast buddy all right, let's get some fish. It's a freaking walleye. Is it? All right. That's an interesting start for the day. Crazy. I caught a monster walleye the other day on a spinner bait, though. I've only, up until that one I caught the other day, this is, well, really, this is only the third or fourth one I've caught this entire year. Do you eat them? No. No? You. Oh, they are tasty, man. You want it? Nah, but I'm gonna get a quick hey, picture yeah. real quick. <laughs> Look at the teeth on this sucker. Woo! All right, let me get a still shot. First fish of the day on. Ah! Oh, there he goes. On this. Uh, he hit it just a, like a freaking bass. You got a dragon head there, and then the the swim bait, and you're just moving that along the bottom. Slow, real slow. rolling it, yeah. Cool. Casting it out there, letting it hit the bottom, and just a slow, steady retrieve. He came up, thumped it, like I said, just like a bass. Cool. He fought like a cold bass. Yeah. Head shaking around. He was thick. Yeah. in them. Moderate action rods. 
and it was on a pause. It's, when you jerk bait fish in the fall, it's all about figuring out how much of a pause you want in that, that jerk bait. And I'll let you know, I think that was somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 seconds. And he, he was just sort of on it. He wasn't, he didn't smash it. We haven't had a lot of bites this morning, but he just sort of glommed onto it. There we go. Look at how dark its belly is. That means it's light. And... <laughs> See how That's dark it is underneath? Yeah. It's light. And... It's, they're on the bottom. Yeah. All right, let's get a weight on this one and get her back. 18 and a quarter inch, three pound, 14 ounce, almost a four pound. Another nice one on the jerk bait. Again, right about seven, seven seconds on that jerk, how long it was down there. A lot of guys won't be patient enough with how long you let it let it drift in current. Second jerk bait fish of the day, this one was uh, 19 and a half, four pound, two ounce. So two 19 inch range fish. If you want to put this one back? Flip them, support them. Lower them down into the water. Say thank you for playing. Alright. Boom. Go. Yeah, Jeff had asked me uh, where at exactly I had caught this fish, and to be honest, I wasn't sure. I threw out. Uh, when I was throwing, I heard my reel start to backlash. I looked down and I had a backlash and just started pulling it out. It's probably pulling the Pulling, pulling the line out of my reel for a good 25 seconds. I'm gonna let this this fish go. It's a decent fish, probably 18 inches. But um, jerk bait, pulling the line out, good 25 seconds. Went to reel up the slack. Thought to myself, oh man, I'm snagged. Gave it a pop, and it ended up being a fish. So that's a testament of how long you actually need to let these jerk baits sit. 25 seconds, picking out a backlash. Ended up catching a fish out of it. You don't need a net? Yeah, I'll take the net. Can you hand that net up here, Cooper? wasn't a very long pause, but it was a pause. I felt I'm kind of ticking at it. Went after it a couple times. Nice fish. Yep. Junker. Let's take a look at which one you're throwing. Let's see what kind of similarities we have. It's a Rapala. Uh, That's an X-Wrap. Yeah, an X-Wrap. I'm not sure what size that is. Is it an eight? So we got some gold and some orange. We're gonna look at the one that, that I've been catching them on. Let's jump over here. So similarities, that's a Lucky Craft Corner 100. It's got a little green in there, but it's got that same orange that, that Joe's, the orange and the gold on the side. So who knows, we could be catching them on bone colored ones or, or anything else, but we're catching them on gold and orange jerk baits. Paused. Came up slow, but he's been a heavy one to bring in. That fish has some weight. Oh, a heavy fish. And this is the clacker. That's a big, big gaudy spinner bait. I say when I, I'm throwing this that the circus is coming to town because these two blades clack together, and we're in some pretty stained water. And uh, that makes for a very, a very large presence coming through the water. I did have to slow it down quite a bit to get this one to hit. Nice, chunky 18-incher, just shy of four pounds. Uh, 
big fish like that big spinner bait, big clacker, those big blades smashing into one another. So let's let them go. Bye bye fish. We don't have a thermometer, but I will tell you, just touching it, I think our water temperature is somewhere probably mid 50s, and you're not quite slow rolling a spinner bait then. Um, you, you can, but you, you want it near the bottom. And what I'm doing, and why I think this the clacker is a good option for that, um, is that it's a three quarter ounce spinner bait, so it's going to get down. But it does have those big those big blades, and they thump against each other, and they're going to elevate it somewhat. I want, to, I want you to look at the tip of my rod and see how much vibration they're sending out. And it, it's doing some erratic things here and there. There's a sweet spot of the, you know, of the speed in terms of that spinnerbait performing at optimal um, vibration. But it's just got a whole lot going on. These blades will actually clang on each other, but they'll also catch on each other. And as as it's coming through the water, it'll be going straight, and then it'll hop over here. And where, where it stops hopping, it's when those blades free from one another. But when they get caught on one another, it, it basically makes it do an invasive maneuver. Um, other things I got going on here, and this is really a great spinnerbait for this sort of stained water. Um, I got the, the boot tail um, swim bait trailer on there. There's actually a rattle in that, and I got little rattles here. So it's just got so much going on that it's they're, they're not going to miss it. They will know that it's it's coming and it's their decision whether they're going to eat it or not. But I like to have them have it moving slow and uh, we're getting them here and there behind these these grass islands. Nice slow presentation near the bottom. I'm not quite stopping it and letting it sit like a jig yet. That'll happen in November. But it's just moving along slow. Banging the bottom but keep it moving. I went back to the rattle trap and uh, really just straining water. It's stained water, so that the noise of this rattle bait just carries a long way. Oh, and he's off. And we'll get back. Don't go down there. Fish it's traveling. a flippy fishing. He is a flippy fishing. We're going to flip him back in the water. So just like the, the clacker, this has a pretty strong presence in, in this stained water. Makes a lot of noise. Rip. Now today on the water we had, um, it wasn't really muddy water, but it was stained and you really had to, to fish lures and, and techniques uh, that played to those conditions. Not only was it stained water, and maybe the fish couldn't see as far in it, it was cold, so they were slowed down. I mean, we had had, early in the week, leading up to that fishing trip, um, a pretty cold and, and significant rain that did muddy the water for a couple of days. Um, <clears throat> You know, once Saturday came, it cleared a little bit, but there were areas that we only had about a foot and a half, maybe two foot of visibility. So let's take a look at the lures that worked in that cold stained water. I have the three baits here that I was successful with today in that, that stained um, mid 50 degree water. And the most successful for me was the suspending jerk bait. I think why this is a, a particularly effective lure is because it makes a lot of noise as you as you rip it and it wobbles back and forth making rattles making a lot of noise coming through the water uh, but the pause is is absolutely critical and how long of a pause uh, is almost a function of how cold the water is you know I had I had seven second pauses today and that was enough for these the fish to come find this uh, as it as it moves into the 40s and even into the 30s, my pauses will be much longer. Now, these graphics here that, I've, that I came up with show kind of how I visualize what's happening out there in terms of the sound 
that these baits make uh, coming through the cast. So this is this is my cast, the the path of my cast, and as I rip it, sound waves go out a long way from the path of that cast. And then when I pause it, it's not making any any noise as it's just drifting in current. And that's usually when I catch them. Uh, is is on that drift, but I think ripping it and then pausing it and then ripping it and then pausing it these rips call them in from a long distance away uh, Whereas this right here is if you were ju to just cast and retrieve it So these are search baits. They cover a lot of water quickly, but as the cooler uh, Water sets in you do want to have a way to slow down the other way that I was able to slow down is with uh, and, and give them a chance to, to catch up with it is to use a big spinner bait like this with these big blades that comes through the water fairly slow and I put this this swim bait trailer on there as a means to make that big pro profile even bigger and big profiles uh, are, are obviously more visible um, than smaller ones in, in stained water and although this didn't make quite as big a sound signature coming through the water on that on the retrieve uh, it still did account for a couple nice fish the last one i have here is the uh the rattle trap or this is the the coppers um, lipless rattle bait is what they call that um, has a huge sound signature coming through the water now this would have been more successful if the fish were in in more of a chasing mood but they they preferred you know obviously things that they could catch up to because this is the first good cold snap that we had had um, thus far this fall now if they are chasing it and they are into to going after um, things that are moving quickly it's a very effective search bait and there are days if it's if it's been cold and it's and it's either on a slow warming trend even down into the 40s where they're used to it being cold they will chase these uh, but that wasn't the case today because I think we've the the trend has been that it's cooled down quite a bit in the last week or so with that cold rain that we had so there are three stained water search bait options so pick a few of them next time you're out and uh, you have some stained water